Hi everyone, Regina here with Starter PPC. I'm gonna walk through uh, an account setup and we're gonna diagnose why things aren't working and what to do about it. So before I begin, I wanna tell you that this is a fashion accessories brand. The accessories are a little bit um, like flamboyant party accessories, but they're also like high class, high quality, kind of expensive um, as far as accessories go. It has a very niche market um, and it has a budget of $1,000 per month, an ad budget. So um, first thing we're gonna do is look at the way the setup is right now, and then we'll talk through what makes sense. So um, uh, as you can see about, uh, well, $900 has been spent on these two campaigns in particular. We have a standard shopping campaign, which is only promoting one category within a, a, a store that has about six categories, right? So we're only focusing on the main product that is kind of the centerpiece of the website. And it's also what they specialize in. Um, and I think it's also the most expensive um, category on the site. And then, uh, and then a, smart sh a smart campaign. All right, so for those of you who aren't familiar with smart campaigns, they're a lot like the asset only Pmax campaigns that we used to run, where they kind of run, um, they run on all networks except for the shopping network, as far as I know. Um, and the performance so far is showing this. So we've got 180% return on the um, smart shopping campaign and 40% return on the standard shopping campaign. This is really low, right? This is averaging out at 65%. 180 is decent. 40 is not great, and this is our main campaign because as you can see, the standard shopping campaign is spending $700 so far, and the smart shopping is only kind of assisting it with $159. So something needs to change to get this to work. Now, the first thing that I notice when I look at this setup is that there is no remarketing at all. Um, smart campaign probably does some remarketing, but it's not going to do any product remarketing, right? So right now, when somebody's on the website viewing a product, um, that product image should follow them around the internet. Like, hey, you liked this product, you liked this product, are you still thinking about buying it, right? So um, especially with this campaign, because it's the type of thing where the products are so beautiful and um, kind of custom. So they're just, <laughs> they work really well as uh, remarketing ads. So we're going to set up a display remarketing campaign that has the shopping feed attached to it. And we're not going to restrict which products are shown in that campaign. All right. We are going to restrict the audience, right? We're going to restrict it only to um, people who were on the website, right? We're going to use our remarketing audience. Um, and that way, uh, it's probably only going to be able to spend, you know, $2 a day, $3 a day. Obviously, we don't want to show people the product 500 times. We want to show every user the product they looked at like 10 or 15 times, maybe 20 at a max. But we don't want to waste money just showing products. So we're going to kind of restrict the spend. It's probably going to spend about 2 or $3 a day. So that's not a big campaign, but it makes a big impact. I've seen where we set up remarketing ads and suddenly the standard shopping is able to get a higher return. Why does that happen? Because standard shopping gets the first click, the person decides to wait on their decision to buy, the remarketing campaign follows them around, they finally think, you know what, I do wanna buy that, and they open up a new tab, they go straight to the website and they buy. So they never clicked on the remarketing ad, but they did click on the standard shopping campaign. So what does the algorithm do? It attributes the conversion to the standard shopping campaign, raising the uh, return for this campaign, right? And raising the overall conversion rate as well for the entire account. So the campaigns do kind of work in tandem with each other and they work holistically. This brings me to my second point, um, which is we need some sort of smart shopping. Um, standard shopping campaigns, they don't do anything that's smart at all, right? They're just gonna 
if someone's searching and it has the budget and it can win over the competition for that auction, it is going to bid. And it doesn't care if the person is a really hot lead or if they're on the website recently. Um, it is just going to bid what it can bid and try to win that auction and get these cold leads to the site. So usually the cost per click is um, high, right? Because it's doing a lot of heavy lifting, cold lead prospecting. So as you can see here, $1.21. Um, and it doesn't do a great job at any sort of um, smart bidding, right? So if it sees that someone's hot, we want to bid more aggressively. If it sees that someone's cold, we want to reserve our money and bid less aggressively. We don't care about losing that bid if there's other competitors that want it more. Um, so <sighs> smart shopping is tough to get nowadays since we don't we can't run smart shopping campaigns like we used to that it's not allowed anymore the only way i know how to do it is to run a pmax campaign nowadays um, if your budget is very limited like in our case we're probably going to hold off on setting up a pmax campaign um, but we will set it up once we get a little bit more budget and once we get a little bit more history in this account we just don't want to do too too many things at once so um, ideally, we have a PMAX campaign that has access to all the products, and this will work similar to the display remarketing campaign that I just described, which has the product feed around and it follows people around on the display network with images of the product they looked at. But the PMAX campaign operates a little bit differently in that it can also, um, it also has smart shopping in it, meaning if someone's on the shopping network, um, I mean, BMAX does all the same remarketing activities that a display remarketing does, but it's also going to spend its money on all the things that the smart shop, the smart campaign does. And it's going to do also all the things that standard shopping does, except better. So it does a lot. And that's why um, we're not we're waiting to get it started because it's kind of a big campaign that we just don't have the budget for right now. And we think that if we hyper target the budget at a display remarketing campaign that can show people the products they want on the display network, that will be good enough to boost the campaigns that are here for now with the limited budget that we have. Hi there, quick interruption. Do you know the main thing that prevents small business owners from getting their Google Ads account into a position to grow and scale? Budget. A lot of businesses, especially those that are just starting out, have limited budgets. And so because of this, they're turned away by most ad agencies because most ad agencies have minimum budget thresholds that they're willing to work with. So what happens is the business owners end up learning Google Ads themselves. And the problem with that is that most of the advice online is geared towards larger accounts. And the advice doesn't have any of those strategies or tricks that can kickstart the algorithm into giving a small account a leg up over larger competitors. So it often just doesn't work and the business just ends up losing money month over month. If this sounds familiar, Starter PPC can help. We offer Google Ads management services that are designed for accounts that have between $1,000 and $5,000 budgets. And because all of our clients are just starting out, we've come up with ways to keep our management fees significantly lower than most agencies. Because we know that every dollar saved on management fees just goes towards the ad budget, which is going to help the algorithm gather speed and power. So if you're serious about growing your business and you'd like a team of Google Ads experts to help you without breaking the bank, check us out at starterppc.com. Okay, back to the video. Okay, moving on to number three. I have four things, by the way, that I'm running through with you guys. So um, there's no videos. And that's a big problem for this particular brand because of the nature of the product, right? It doesn't have a ready-made audience, a ready-made market of people who have to buy it and they're already looking for it. It's not like that. This is an impulse buy product. People see it and they go, oh my God, I didn't even know that existed, but I have to have it. So that's what I mean by impulse buy product. And the best thing you can do with impulse buy products is have a lot of really high quality videos. And when I say high quality videos, I don't mean dump thousands and thousands of dollars into video production. I mean, study how to do videos well that work well in an ad. In fact, I even made a few videos on this subject so you can search our, our, our channel for that. Um, the main thing to know about videos is that you have five seconds before people can click skip ad, right? So you have five seconds to, to tell them what you're selling and the value on why they should want it. Um, so on impulse buy products, I'm always saying, hey, the more videos you have, the better. Like you should have minimum 10 videos 
And you can take the same video and just swap out the first five seconds in each video because most people don't even watch past the first five seconds anyways. So why don't you just make one video, five intros, and slice them up and uh, upload them to YouTube and let's get some remarketing going. For impulse buy, at a bare minimum, you wanna have video remarketing going. In fact, I recommend having remarketing video remarketing going on every single account that we have because it's so powerful. But for impulse buy, you're gonna wanna also run a little bit of outbound video. And again, we have a very limited budget, but I feel that that will be so powerful when we get those videos from our client that I wanna make budget for it, even if it's just $5 a day, right? Um, yeah. And the trick with outbound is to try to choose a hyper-targeted market. Like if you have a niche, try to identify that one niche. Don't put in 20 different audiences because that's just going to let the algorithm spend on whichever audience is the biggest. So if you know your niche, put it into the outbound campaign, especially if you're limited on budget and get it to hyper-focus on that niche of market of people. All right. Um, number four, and this is the last one. I'm going to show you guys what's going on in here. So the smart campaign... When I go to images, it's pulling images from the website, but we only get three rectangular images and three square images and two logo images. And right now it's just pulling products, product images from the website. So um, this isn't ideal when, when you're running display ads, image ads that aren't on the shopping network, you want to have lifestyle images. And so, um, you know, this can be just a person wearing the product or holding the product up, smiling at the camera. Faces are always going to get more attention, more views, more clicks. Um, but don't just have an image of the product sitting on a table or on a white background. Reserve that for the shopping ads because lifestyle images are always going to work better on a display network because you're following people around the internet and trying to catch their attention. They're not sitting there looking for a product, right? So um, that's how any display campaign should work. So the smart campaign does a lot of display and we need to get some lifestyle images in there, but the display remarketing campaign that I described before, we're gonna attach the product feed and it's gonna probably spend like 90% of its budget on um on the on product images right on it basically shows a shopping ad that that follows people around on the display network um only about like 10 percent of the time when it can't attach someone to the product that they looked at on the site then it's going to default to our lifestyle images which we'll have in there as like a default ad for when for when the product feed can't be used all right, that's that. So we're going to revamp this campaign and we'll see how it does. I hope this has been a educational experience and thank you for watching. Hi everyone, Regina here with Starter PPC. We have a lead generation client, meaning not an e-commerce client. They just collect leads on their website and then they uh, sell them services. Actually, this one sells SaaS. It's a, it's a platform, but it's a platform that's sold 